Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners and macabre murders from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the tales that we tell. And it's episode 62. Hurrah, 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 hurrah. It's a day. It's one more than we had last week. Oh, the empire is building. It is. How are you, Nick? I'm all right. Can't complain. Can't yeah, complain. Apart from I got slightly damp this evening. Oh, you got damp? Yes. In a slight sudden haily downpour. Did you get caught in the rain while talking about how much you like pina coladas? I did. I did. Ah. I was no, no, I wasn't talking to anyone in particular, just <laughs> strangers on the street. Rending your garments going, I like pina yep. coladas. <laughs> yeah, I did that and some dancing around lampposts it was with my umbrella. It was great. Oh, lovely. Mashing of the two genres. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, it sounds like a very <laughs> active day. I have not done any of that. <laughs> I wrote this episode. That's what I did and, and went to work. That needed to be done, I feel. It, it does. So I have money to write episodes. I was talking about all about the writing the episode. I don't care about work. <laughs> Uh, any poisonings this week? Uh, I, not that I've noticed. No? I'm getting very lax in my observational skills, it has to be said. There could be a many a poisoning. You need to position an easy chair by the window. Yes. And have a spyglass of some kind of Victorian <laughs> style and look out the window and judge people. Absolutely. I feel like a little, little, little balcony, a little like a widow's watch <laughs> sort of thing that I can I can sit there. A widow's watch? Well, that's what they call it. They're look at, looking to see, to see their yes, loved ones come the back. that's the top of the house to, for a woman to stand clutching her hands to her chest. Absolutely, not to yes. Spying if anyone's died yet from poison. Well, this is multi-purpose. This is a multi-purpose one. Nick's fabulous widow's watch. <laughs> yes. Either that, or I've just decided I'm going to be like that crazy man in Mary Poppins who has a boat and a cannon on his roof. Yeah. Oh, the captain who spies all the things <laughs> and just fires cannon into the air, and no one. Cares. Weather coming in. Fire the cannons. <laughs> That sounds great fun. I want to do that. There you go. Just alert people to the poisonings. Oh, that's what my Patreon money is going towards. A cannon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. We've split the Patreon money down the middle now. Well, no, no. All the Patreon money is going on the cannon. This is for <laughs> cannon. And this is for a few crusts for you. <laughs> this is the cannon and this is the rum money. <laughs> That's all the money there is. I mean, we say we're splitting it. I'm going to be the idiot who's there stoking the cannon. Absolutely, and yeah. orders on time. <laughs> You'll be there chiseling cannonballs out of solid rock. <laughs> You're sitting there in your big chair with the spyglass and, and the I'm rum. there going, all right, Captain, there we are. I've gone West Country for no reason. I've gotten into the park. I cannot see an issue with this whatsoever. <laughs> well, speaking of firing cannons and sitting and judging people through a spyglass, I think it's time for us to thank our lovely new Patreon subscribers. Oh, indeed, they are delicious. Light. So thank you so much to Jen Keo, to Claire Iona, Donna Atlena, to Jessica Mariacelli, to Mana, to Jem Gator, and Charity McAfee. Thank you, darling people. The rabbit is safe for another week. Yay! You're all very, very sexy. We very much appreciate all the support. Indeed, thank you. If we ever repeat names, it's because maybe they're a repeat subscriber or they've come back on. Doesn't matter. Indeed. That's what Patreon is for. It's flexible. As long as they are contributing to the Canon Fund, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Do we need an extra tear on there now? <laughs> Cannon fodder. The can, the, the, oh, oh, I like it. That's clever. I like it. I don't think people will want to sign up to that. I'm cannon fodder. Wait, what? <laughs> We've had fun on Patreon this week. We we delved into the world of sport. Yes, and it was, wasn't as terrifying as I thought it might have a been. A very famous and very crazy, crazy story that will stay with us every year we watch the Olympics now, I think. Yeah, I do that so much. Do you not watch the Olympics? I watched it in 2012 when it was in London. Oh. Uh... No, I lied. I say I watched the opening thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, anything for a spectacle, obviously. Exactly. It's fancy, fancy costumes. Yeah, that was all very exciting. Sport? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I do like to watch the Olympics while lying on the sofa eating crisps, calling anyone who misses their mark loser. Yeah, exactly. Just yelling <laughs> advice at the best athletes in the world. <laughs> you shit. <laughs> you shit, crisps. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> well, Nick. Yes. Well, 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 well. Yes, yes, yes. Are you ready to, to drink cocktails and talk about poison? See, it's getting, it's getting weird again. Or... We could drink poison and talk about cocktails if you keep criticising the way I deliver this line. <laughs> well, it varies so much. The inflections go everywhere. I don't know what's coming or going. I like to mix it up. And you throw me. That's what I'm saying. Confuses me every week. Oh, big surprise. Sinead likes weird accents and inflections. <laughs> Woo. Well. Um, well, I mean, it has to be said, it has been at least 
three days since my last cocktail. Good God, man. Are you okay? I know. Exactly. So I think it's definitely well overdue a cocktail. Oh, we're going to go with the first one. Hooray, hooray, hooray. But as we've established, we can't, we can't, we can't possibly tell a story without a cocktail in hand. As you know, every week we pick a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell and what flavour a cocktail of the week. My story this week, so my pick. Yes. Yes. It was, wasn't it? It, it? it was, it was. And the secret ingredient this week is a hammer. Hammer. Now, I can't help but feel this may give us some clue as to what's coming in the episode. A lot of DIY. Death in Ikea, potentially. Absolutely. That famous novel by Agatha Christie that was rejected <laughs> for being ahead of its time. A hammer. A hammer. It is an inspiration. It could be an ingredient. I don't mind anything that's served with a hammer. <laughs> toffee is served with a hammer. Not enough stuff is served with hammers. This, I is, feel. this is very true. I don't think toffee's ever actually served with a hammer. I think no. you get a hammer. <laughs> yes. I don't think it's some sort of delicacy in fine rest. <laughs> it should be. I mean, there are lots of little knives and forks and things. You get very specific things. You get like a little <laughs> snail fork or an oyster thing. Perhaps a tiny little silver toffee tiny, hammer. A tiny, 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 tiny one. Now you've said that, I think it's a thing way I back don't, when. I think it may well be, actually. Yes, <laughs> tiny little hammer. And I bet you there's a Michelin star restaurant somewhere that serves some sort of toffee dessert. He has a tiny little hammer to beat it up with. Or what it's going to be, it's not actually for toffee, though. It's like going to be for like breaking into some endangered uh, egg or something. No, it's for... Lobster, you get hammer. You get hammer to break no, the shell. You get crackers. No, but you get hammer as well. Crab, so a crab hammer? shell. I'm know. pretty sure you get a kind of a weird, bumpy, hammery clam. Ha- People, help! Help us! <laughs> Tell us what this anyway, is. Anyway, we have neither clams nor crab in <laughs> oh, the cocktail God line. Damn it! One week we will. <laughs> okay, well, I've thrown you a curveball with hammer, but I'm intrigued because normally when I send Nick the secret ingredient, he goes, "Oh, for God's sake!" Immediately he came back with, "Yes, that's fine." <laughs> what? I did actually. It was very speedy. <laughs> what has he been planning? So, with hammer as your inspiration. An ingredient what have you come up with well there are many things I mean, there are actually a few options um okay. with this one and i if all else failed i thought i'll just like make 12 and get get us hammered um hey! i thought that could also <laughs> i thought that could also be an option which someone on instagram also was <laughs> ahead of me so well well okay. well i planned on one cocktail this evening but then i was so inspired what i made a second in order to get us hammered Yay! It's a double whammy, people! It's a double hammery oh. whammy. Um, Two hammers for the price of one? So, yes, so our first cocktail we're having is a velvet hammer. Velvet hammer? Velvet hammer. Oh. Nice and soft oh. and hammery. Hammery, yes. And then. Okay. This is from um, dear lovely Andrew on Facebook. Really? <laughs> Well, so now we are going to have a nine pound hammer as well. A nine pound hammer. <laughs> because he posted the ingredients. I thought, I've got all of those. Yay. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to make that. <laughs> well done, Andrew. You see, if you get in early with your ingredients and they're reasonable, we might just make it on air, people. If I've got the stuff in the cupboard, I'll yeah. give it a go. Well so done, Andrew. double hammered. Double hammered. Um, I'm excited. Oh my God, this yeah. is crazy. And this is a big story this week as well. Is so it? I think it justifies it. We'll need the two drinks. Nick has, as ever, delivered me some secret ingredients in secret bottles so i think it is time for us to go down into our isolation kitchens and shake up a storm so we'll see you in a minute we'll see you in a bit and we're back hello not one but two drinks indeed yay so very exciting oh i'm in a party mode because these <laughs> look fun they do fun with a capital f the velvet hammer looks particularly exciting. <laughs> is it the first time we've ever had a drink as purely pink as this? I think it may well be. The first, yes, the most <laughs> entirely pink cocktail that we have had. It looks like a milkshake. Yeah. Honestly. Brings all the boys to the yard. Especially the pink ones. Indeed. And the other one has more of a golden hue, Indeed. our bonus cocktail. So what are we going to do? We're going to start with... Well, I think we start with a velvet hammer because that was the, the, the plan all along. And big thank you to Nick for also delivering little tiny cocktail umbrellas to go with this. <laughs> it seemed appropriate. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be served with this, but it looks damn pretty. Okay, so this is in a this is quite a hefty uh I really hope this is nice. So do I, yeah. <laughs> right, we're gonna okay. dive in. So the velvet, velvet hammer. hammer. Hit us with your best shot. Cheers. 
<laughs> I could I could drink that. I don't, ooh, yeah, ooh, okay. There's, some, there's something happening. <laughs> I, it's so confusing. Nick will talk us through in a second. But it does look like a, a like a strawberry milkshake. And then just before I bloody well sipped it, I went through my head going, oh, it looks a bit like Pepto-Bismol. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I can assure and you it is not Pepto-Bismol. And that confused my taste buds. So I was no, I had no idea what I'm expecting. A similar colour to that, but not at all. It's, it's a creamy one, which mm. we very rarely have. I quite like that. I like that. Second sip, hang on. Yeah, I do really like it, but I'm so confused as to what's happening. It's good. The first taste, I swear to God, the first taste tastes a little bit like watermelon to me. Oh. I don't know why. But then it goes into a nice chocolatey, citrusy. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's a, that's a dangerously tasty drink. Yeah, it is, okay. Yeah. Also, before we even talk about it, yay to a successful drink. Well, quite absolutely, yes, indeed. Yay to a good drink at long last. It's been oh, far too long, far too long. Well, why don't you talk us through it, Nick? <laughs> so yes, yeah, so we the Velvet Hammer. It looks happy and jolly and fluffy and pink, but it will <laughs> smash you in the face. <laughs> So yeah, so we we certainly have a milkshakey thing. So we've got both single cream and milk in there, but then vodka. Mm. <laughs> so there's a bit of vodka, uh, Cointreau for an orangey twang. Oh, okay. Creme de cacao for the chocolatey hint, and then grenadine, giving us this uh... pinky hue. Um, yeah, and it is just like a desperately boozy, lovely co- uh, milkshake. That is really nice. Like that. I'm worried about it because it's so drinkable and lovely, yeah. and it's quite strong. Yeah, well, exactly. It's quite strong, <laughs> so it will smash you. But what else is a hammer do? It's a very giggly drink. You know what? We're not overly sweet fans. And I think we've rejected some less milky, creamy cocktails that we've had in this show that have been too sweet. That is not too sweet. That is sweet. not it. No. It absolutely. looks like it should be. Yeah, it's quite... Oh, it's a symphony of flavours. I love yeah. it. At long last, we have a good one. Yay. Now, we can try the bonus drink now, or would you rather wait? Should we do it? Let's do it. Let's, let's get, give it a get, go get, now. Get that bit out of the way and then it won't interrupt the storytelling. And then we've just got two drinks to just knock through as exactly. we tell the biggie. I put a cocktail umbrella in this one too because I felt Well, festive. why not? Though I think this one could be slightly more punchy. Okay. <laughs> than okay. Uh, the other one. Nine pound hammer. It's going to do a bit of damage, I imagine. Whoa. So let's see what we think on this one. So if it's horrible, it's all your fault, Mr. Andrew. We'll trust you, Andrew. Mm. That's actually damn good. That's really nice. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that is Andrew has just reached into your brain and plucked out exactly the kind of drink that we like. Well done, sir. That is an excellent, excellent choice. Mm. Oh my god, we've got two great drinks to make up for the disappointment of last week and the horror of the mustard the week before. Quite. Any any thoughts on this one? What's what might be contained within? It's got a lovely citrus twang to it it's sharp it's not overly sweet would i be wrong in thinking there's rum in this you would not be wrong yay it's a rum based splendor rum has redeemed itself from the disappointment of last week <laughs> yeah we have rum we have yay. drambui oh which was in the cupboard I'm like yes another option <laughs> to use that so hurrah for that pineapple mm. again you, got oh, well, you had some pineapple left over probably <laughs> had some pineapple left over lemon juice so a double oh. citrusiness and then two things you perhaps wouldn't suspect. Okay. We've got a, a couple of dashes of absinthe. No, 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 yeah. Nick. <laughs> Which you, if you, I mean, it's, it's literally dashes. Yeah. Oh, I can smell it now. Now you said it. But it is slightly in there. Mm. So the, the, the final ingredient, which makes me very <laughs> okay. happy, yellow chartreuse. No, no. Oh, why? <laughs> why did I fall for it? Okay, you know what? It's one of the chartreuse cocktails I can drink. Mm. There we go. Yeah, I can't tell it's in there. Cannot tell it's in there, but there's just a little something. I think you would miss it if it wasn't. Yes, but that is, wow. That is a... Yeah, I'm pleased. Two really good cocktails, completely opposite end of the spectrum. That is how you do a rum cocktail. Last week with the rum and the pineapple, uh, it just got messed up by all the sugar that was thrown in there. This, add some absinthe to it, because fuck it, why not, apparently? Yeah. <laughs> We're living dangerously. So absinthe um, cocktail-based episodes generally go well. We do go insane <laughs> on them. So, oh my God. So it's great. It's not my episode, so I can just sit here and just get hammered. Oh, that's why you did two <laughs> cocktails, obviously. I've got to sit and look at these now. <laughs> and read words. Good luck. Resounding success on the cocktail front. Well, we have a velvet hammer in one hand, a nine-pound hammer in the other. We're going to be really buff by the end of this episode we're gonna stroll down the street with our hammers in hand are you ready for a story nick oh yes definitely definitely well in honor of the double cocktail we have a tale of not one not two but a whole family 
of dastardly killers. Nice. <laughs> well, I say nice. It's horrible. But I say nice. That's a good thing. It's a nasty thing. Family. The greatest poison <laughs> of them all. So, yes, this is a biggie. One that people may recognise as soon as I start telling it. But it is a great one. It's uh, it's a little gruesome. So, uh, trigger warning to people who don't like the details. We'll try and warn you when they're coming up. Or we'll just spring them on you. Yeah, because we'll, we'll have forgotten by then. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be, we'll be two cocktails deep. And his head fell off. Ha, ha, ha. We are off, Nick, to Labette County in Kansas, USA. Ooh. And it is 1870. And we are in the pretty wide open countryside. Many, many plains. Nick, picture all the plains of America. I'm picturing their, their delightful plains. It's your favourite thing in the world. They are exceptional. Now, we are in land that was originally owned by the Osage nation i hope i'm pronouncing that right osage or osage a tribe of native americans sad history of this piece of land they were ejected from their home by the u.s government that's where most native americans I've moved to the so-called indian territory which later became oklahoma famous for its musicals <laughs> but the native americans were ejected to make way for lots of homesteaders uh, now for our non-american listeners this is where the u.s law at the time allowed families to rock up and claim acres of government land to call their own well there's enough of it isn't there really it, there is a lot there's quite a lot of land <laughs> so yes you have all these families traveling west west to claim land and set up home and hopefully make their fortune and in 1870, a collection of five different families arrive in the area to make their claim on a huge, dusty expanse of America. Huge tract of land. Huge tracts of land. Among the people scrabbling for their claim were John Bender Sr. and John Bender Jr. <laughs> Did those names ring any bells to you, Nick? Yes, indeed, because I was very nearly to this episode myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I haven't researched it too much. <laughs> nope, nope, you're all good. Nothing is written down. <laughs> the Benders, the Bender family. They would have another name they would be known by later, but let's just go with it here. The Benders are immigrants from Europe. I'm just putting Europe in inverted commas there because... They're not German. Well, people assumed they were German. Right, OK. They spoke with what was perceived to be German accents. It could be foreign, foreign accents. Other people would swear blind that they were Dutch. Many, many rumours about their origins would later be proffered as absolute fact by people who knew them, but probably German, possibly Dutch. Trouble was about this, about ad identifying where their accents came from, was that John Bender Sr. spoke barely any English, and when he did speak it was in this just guttural sound that came out of his mouth. No one could understand what he was saying at the best of times, if it was English, if it was German, if it was Dutch, if it was anything else. He's about 60 years old at the time. He's a far from jolly chap. Mm. But his son, John Jr., Bender Jr., was a little softer around the edges, a reportedly handsome man of 25. He did speak English, but with a, let's call it a Germanic accent. <laughs> okay. Covers many bases. <laughs> to be fair, they could have been fucking French, for all we know, because <laughs> no one understood what accent was. Foreign! They could have been English, I don't know. So John, he's, he's younger, he speaks English, much more reasonable, apart from the fact that he just tends to laugh out loud at random intervals every now and then. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? More quiet. A lot of people tend to think then he's a little slow, especially in land negotiations. Him laughing maniacally is not a good idea. <laughs> or is it? Well, yes, it's a, it could be a cunning ruse. But father and son, despite the guttural grunts of the father and the mysterious laughter from the son, still managed to secure a decent plot of land. 160 acres. Mm. That is quite decent. That is quite a large tract of land. Yes, it's about the size of the UK. Is it? I lied. It's entirely not. I believed you for a minute there. <laughs> you, you really did. <laughs> it's like... I don't know how big an acre is. I'm like 160 <laughs> acres. That's to the moon. <laughs> the important thing is that they have the 160 acres, but it is right alongside the Great Osage Trail. Now, that's the only open road that people use in this part of the world traveling to the west. So it's, it's, it's like having a plot of land by the I don't know, M25. No, the M6. The M6. The M6. Like, oh, that's a big road. That's a big road in England. All oh, people, try the M6 if you come over to England. <laughs> it's very long and pointy. We're now recommending motorways. As well you know, my <laughs> husband has a top five. Well, top five. Yeah, absolutely. Top five motorways. motorway service stations. And these have been honed over the years. I'm sad to say that I have a favourite list. 
So they have this piece of land by the Great Osage Trail, the perfect place for the Bender family to open a business. Land secured, it is time for the rest of the family to arrive and to start building. So the two Johns set about building what will be their home and their business, a large cabin, a barn with a corral, for livestock and then a few months later into 1871 now mother and daughter arrive on the land mother ma bender elvira bender elvira bender is that a particularly germanic name elvira is is germanic is it okay. yeah I'm saying this with absolute authority. Yeah, I mean, I love the way, just the, the, the <laughs> confidence you say these things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. It absolutely is. I'm pretty sure it's a German name. I'm going to Google it now. Do you want me to wait? Uh, <laughs> Do go ahead, go ahead. First recorded in Spain. Oh, really? Is likely of Germanic origin. See, Germanic, Germanic, there you go. Yeah, fine. So Elvira rocks up with her boobs out and her big black hair. <laughs> She is about 55. She spoke about as much English as her husband nice. and was twice as mean. <laughs> no interest whatsoever in making friends in the area. She was rude. She was horrible to anyone who came her way. So much so that she was called a she-devil. Mm. Rumours abound when she arrives as well. that It's said that she's been married many times before, but her husbands had all mysteriously disappeared. Mm. <laughs> How very <laughs> mysterious. But as for Kate, the 23 three-year-old daughter we're gonna come back to her <laughs> yeah i know where that's going <laughs> <laughs> so the benders set about turning the buildings that they have made into a business opening up the cabin as a general store and in to serve the people who make their way along the dusty trail out west well you need a drink when you're on a dusty trail you need refreshment you, do. you need some coffee you need some dried goods you need a you cup need of water refreshments to stop <laughs> So they've got their plan for their business. General store, in, and then you've got living quarters as well. So they've employed very, very, very high-tech methods. They're going to install a wagon cover sheet in the middle of the room to create two separate rooms. I mean, what other options do you think were available at the time? Bricks. Probably not. Wood. Just a canvas, a canvas sheet, sheet hanging up in what the middle of the room. What more do you need? Yeah, it doesn't even cover the whole of the room, by the way, the whole width of it. There are gaps either side, but fine. I, th I think you and your fancy brick <laughs> house have illusions of grandeur, I feel. Indeed, the big bad wolf won't get me. So front of the house was the store for dry goods. Uh, there is a hand-painted sign that Kate painted herself out the front with groceries written on the front in quite shaky letters, apparently. <laughs> I don't think it was spelt right either. All the, le all the letters were backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's riding by going, huh, grammar. <laughs> so at the front, you have a table area for guests to enjoy a meal or to sit and rest on their travels. At the back, behind the curtain, was home sweet home for the family. Outside of the barn, as I said, you have um, some stables. You also have an orchard and a vegetable patch, which the two women planted and grew. It's a, it's a dusty land, but they're trying to make the best of it. So far, so meh. Meh. Mm -hmm. Family running a general store, miserable, cantankerous old folk. Well, that's nothing new. Stupid son laughing at anyone who came in and bought coffee and beans. Sounds like many shops I know, to be honest. They weren't, as I said, beloved by the neighbours. And it was written by those who knew them at the time and reported later. The old man. The old man was a repulsive, hideous brute. Without a redeeming trait, dirty, profane and ill-tempered. That's not a good Tinder profile, is it? <laughs> So I sense why the, he didn't like the neighbours. <laughs> it gets better. Okay, good, good. Just listen to this and just see whether we really think anyone said this at the time. Old Mrs. Bender was a dirty old Dutch crone. Her face was a fit picture for the midnight hag that wove the spell of murderous ambition about the soul of Macbeth. Oh, bollocks, I don't know what I said. Like. <laughs> but we now, we know, we now we know she's Dutch. <laughs> they, they thought she was Dutch, but also thought she was the old witch in Macbeth. This is very much someone said, she's an old yeah. witch, and then the journalist, whoever's writing it, is... Very much, I'm going to make my fortune out of this byline. <laughs> <laughs> Young Bender, seen when excited, recalled the grave-robbing hyena at once to mind. Okay. 
<laughs> it's a good picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from necessity, with this beautiful description in mind, why would anyone venture <laughs> out to this store? It's awful. Thinking you're, you approach the store and all you hear is mad cackling from within. <laughs> you go, you, okay, you ride the next 300 miles to the next shop. <laughs> exactly. It can't be that far. There's a sign that Kate has painted next to groceries, next service stop, <laughs> 1,000 miles. So. <laughs> While her father leans out the window and tells everyone to fuck <laughs> off. Now, why would you venture out to this store? Well, maybe now it's time to revisit the daughter. <laughs> Kate Bender. 20. 23 years young and quite the looker. Mm. She is comely, she is curvy, she is oh the sort of person people really want to buy dried beans from. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bother anyone that she seemed very close to her brother or that her entire family sleep in one corner of a cabin behind a sheet because she's a birdie lady. But Kate also had other charms. For you see, the family were allegedly spiritualists. <laughs> now, spiritualism is a religion in inverted commas at yeah the time. very big inverted commas very big inverted commas very big at this time as a religion yes kate offered herself out as a psychic medium she could cure ailments she could tell your fortune she could commune with the dead for a small fee well, of, of course. course she would go into town under the name professor miss kate bender <laughs> And she would give small talks, lectures, very much, again, in inverted commas, lectures. She would yeah. just talk at people. And she would give public seances. And they just thrilled people. Of course, people loved this sort of thing at the time. Maybe part of her popularity was associated with the fact that she was quite in favour of uh, free love. I'm sure that didn't hurt. It didn't. Encouraged people to embrace it. She called any sense of purity or propriety miserable requirements of a self-constituted society. Quite right. In that tone of voice and accent as well. <laughs> Elsewhere she is said to have said, shall we confine ourselves to a single love and deny our natures their proper sway? Mm. Loses track slightly here, even though it be a brother's passion for his own sister. I say it should not be smothered. Yeah, see, there you, you've lost me on that one, I have to say. <laughs> so you started off strong, but you went downhill quite rapidly. <laughs> well, it didn't seem to put people off. Certainly plenty of the men that she met were only too happy to come and visit her at the Bender Inn. Well, they weren't her brother. Maybe they thought they could do better, needing one single coffee bean. Oh, I need to ride out for nine miles to this one inn at the edge of this trail. It's the only place that does a blend I like. Exactly. <laughs> but, Nick, but, a visit to the Bender Inn wasn't a good idea. Because the while the family embraced spiritualism, free living and incest, apparently, <laughs> they also thought nothing of murder. <laughs> yes, if you travel to the inn for a seance, stopped for a meal on your travels, or indeed needed a bed for the night, it was very likely that you would never return once you'd taken a seat at their table. <laughs> So now, trigger warning people who don't like the gory bits. Gather round now for people <laughs> who do like the gory bits. <laughs> Visitors would be invited, whether it was for a meal or for a seance, as I said, or just for some rest, to sit in a chair at the table with their back to the curtain that divided the room in two. Now, this was a seat at the head of the table, so a great honour. Slightly rickety flooring underneath, but doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. <laughs> they would be served their plate of food or their drink, or perhaps they would be enraptured by Kate as she communed with the dead. But as they sat transfixed or immersed in their meal, the curtain behind them would slowly be pulled back, and out would creep old Mr. Bender up behind the unsuspecting victim and raise up a hefty hammer <laughs> and strike the man on the back of the head, killing him instantly. Well, that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> The vicious blow delivered, another family member would slit the man's throat to ensure he would never get up again. <laughs> then they would open the trap door that was under his chair and push the body down into the makeshift cellar. Later, the victims were stripped of their goods. Very few had much in the way of wealth, mm. but they would take what they had anyway. 
It's very Sweeney Todd. <laughs> it is. It's complete. <laughs> this is where they got their inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The chair the, in, down into the basement sort of thing. Absolutely. Over the back of the that. head with a hammer, slit the throat into the cellar, clean up after you, get all their goods, and then the corpse would be dragged out to the orchard and buried. Well, it's very good for the apple trees. <laughs> Is that what all orchards are built on? Dead people, yes, this is true. Dead people make the best fruit. <laughs> now, we do know what happened to people who died at the Benders Inn based on the later investigations of the site, but also through the testimony of people who had escaped the Benders' clutches. Mm -hmm. One man named William Pickering had arrived at the inn for a meal and was, of course, enthusiastically ushered towards the chair Absolutely. by the canvas wall. See the lovely chair? You sit at the head of the <laughs> you table. You sit at that chair. It's very nice. It's very, very good. All the rest of us sit on spikes. You have the chair. <laughs> <laughs> the man takes a look at the chair and at the curtain behind it, the canvas curtain, which is not only covered in strange stains, but appears to be <laughs> twitching somewhat. <laughs> As he, like, old man and Bender forgot to turn the lamp off and there's like a shadow of him with a hammer. <laughs> Arr! So he's like, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit on the counter. I'm going to eat over <laughs> here. And Kate's like, no, 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 you really need to sit down here. Really, you need to sit down here. So look, that's where the trapdoor is. You've got to sit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> sit down here so we can, I mean, just lunch. He keeps refusing. <laughs> he says he can even hear whispers from behind the canvas curtain. Kate gets very <laughs> Very angry with him and decides just to pull a knife out at this point, saying well, you have yeah. to sit in the chair. Still going with the chair thing with the knife. Please sit in this chair. It was my grandmother's chair. He rightly turns around and runs away. Yes, yes, one would. Out of the building. I, I don't also know if the benders can cook while they're offering <laughs> this in thing. Because anyone who sits down to eat a meal and who doesn't think this is weird and runs away ends up dead. So it could just be a beetroot on a plate or a pile of flour <laughs> that's served to them. There's an account from a priest echoing your first theories. A priest comes in and it was going to sit at the table and sees Mr. Bender, Pa Bender, standing behind the curtain holding a massive hammer, <laughs> which he then hides behind his back. <laughs> And then sort of edges, edges behind the curtain. Nice. I want to see that sort of shadow puppet thing going on there with a hammer. This, uh, nothing. No. I was doing some DIY behind here. <laughs> Look at the I put up sconces. <laughs> Other lucky guests at the Bender Inn claim to have also seen Pa Bender standing by the curtain with a hammer. They see the curtain twitching. They hear whispers. They feel threatened approached by the Bender family. On one occasion, all four of the Bender family are crawling at them and they run away. <laughs> well, you can't move very fast if you're crawling. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's weighed down by all the hammers he's holding. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. You've got hammers on belts and the hammers in each hand. And... <laughs> but for the few who got away, plenty of travellers disappeared without a trace after their trip to the inn. Soon people are reported missing while on their travels along the Assange Trail. In the early days, three different men had been found out on the trail with their skulls crushed and their throats cut. But this That'll being do. wild land, rife with horse thieves, people assume that it's just life on the open road, death is not uncommon and is not really looked into at the time. Nah. It's As more people begin to vanish, it's just assumed that this trail is a dangerous place, best avoided. Well, yeah, exactly. You went outside, what do you expect? It's your own fault. It's your own fault. Just make sure you take shelter before nightfall in a nearby inn. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's a lot of crazy hammer-wielding buffalo out there. It's a dangerous <laughs> place. You're just picturing a buffalo standing behind you, just sort of swinging a <laughs> hammer into its hand. It wasn't until the disappearance of a man named William York, who himself was out looking for friends of his who had disappeared on the trail. So they had disappeared. <laughs> okay. A man and his daughter William had gone out to look for them. He disappeared. It's not until then that people actually come knocking at the Bender's doors with proper questions. William's brother is Colonel Alexander York. Very, very good name. I like That's it. That's very fancy. Yeah, absolutely. He arrived at the inn with a colleague and asked the family if they had seen his brother. They sort of vaguely say he had stayed, but he must have fallen prey to those savages out on the prairie. Ugh, savages. Mm. Vaguely satisfied with the answer, Colonel apparently stays for dinner, doesn't get killed, but then heads home. I don't know what he ate. They didn't say. <laughs> It probably wasn't good enough that when he hears about a young woman who has also visited the inn, 
and had fled in terror after being threatened by knives, that he decides, actually, no, 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 I need to go back to this family and ask them more questions. Yes, more questions are required. Yeah. When he goes back again with colleagues, probably because he had company, he didn't fall victim to the Bender family. Yeah. Ma Bender claims not to understand him. She, she doesn't speak English. She doesn't speak English. Is she saying that? I don't speak English. <laughs> I don't speak English. <laughs> but as they questioned her more... She flies into a rage, claiming that the young woman who had, who had accused them of this attack with knives was a witch who had cursed their coffee. Damn those witches. I say damn those witches. They're always after the flat white. <laughs> but she definitely spoke more English than originally thought. Certainly understood it <laughs> when yelled at. The colonel and his friends felt sure now that the Benders had something to do with the disappearances of his brother and of everyone else who's been on the trail. But they need more evidence. So away they go back to the Osage township where the mood is getting restless. With so many disappearances happening, the entire township is coming under fire from outsiders. People thinking mm. that this area is dangerous. They're all thinking the townsfolk are responsible for killing travellers and robbing them as they come through. They hold a town meeting. Something must be done. We need Quite to right. find what's happening. They agree that every homestead will be searched in the coming days once the search warrants have been obtained. We will find who is responsible for this. And everyone who attended this agreed it was a good idea. Everyone in the crowd, including Pa Bender and his son. Don't tell people. I'm In about three or four days, I'm going to come and search your house. <laughs> You've got three days to clear out all the evidence. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Search all the houses in three or four days. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to go now. I've got some stuff to do. That's great. I'm going to sit at home and prepare my family for this search warrant. <laughs> Three days later, a local man, Billy Toll, is driving cattle past the Bender property when he notices that the farm animals that they keep are wandering around unfed and are very clearly near starvation. Which taint right. It's not good, no. No. The inn, it seems, is abandoned. So as soon as they can muster enough volunteers when he gets back to the town, when he can get volunteers together, when the weather settles, it's not, you know, immediate that this happens. Mm. But they get enough people together. Several hundred men. That's probably enough people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all need to get horses for these guys and snacks. But it's a massive crowd descends upon the Benders Inn. Well, just because just they think they've done a runner. Yeah. They, they start, okay, okay. That's a, that's a, is that not a bit of a leap? Well, they all know that all of these homesteads are going to be searched and suddenly the benders who have, are on have, the have trail fled. have fled with no explanation. Fair enough. Suspicions are raised. Suspicions are raised. So they all have to find enough wood to make torches. <laughs> but they go out and, of course, they find the inn completely deserted, stripped of all possessions. But one thing lingers in the house. Hammers. A very bad smell. <laughs> a terrible stench emanating uh, from the floorboards. Didn't clear out that basement, did they? The trapdoor has indeed been nailed shut. But breaking into the cellar, they find this small room below and an overwhelming bad odour. The floor is covered with clotted blood. Ooh. They dig down in there and no bodies are found under the house. But it's thought that enough blood has soaked into the soil that you cannot remove the smell. Oh, that's unpleasant. She shows how you build houses at the time. Literally, they were so convinced that there was evidence underneath the house, they all went out and lifted the house up and moved it over. <laughs> nice, I like it. They were like, dee, dee, dee. <laughs> there we go. Okay, dig nothing here. <laughs> they needed not have taken such efforts because all they had to do was take a little wander over to the orchard <laughs> mm. the men searched the earth around the fruit trees and they found the corpse of william york colonel york's brother along with nine other grave sites around the orchard eight bodies were found one was found in the well and many Many other body parts were found strewn. <laughs> Just random bits. <laughs> uh, the bodies that were found were men, apart from one young mm. girl who was found. Mm. Now, there's reports that a toddler was found who appeared to have been smothered. Another report said an eight-year-old girl was found. 
and had again been smothered and her bones had been broken. It's thought that these were possibly children of the travellers who came by and they were just in the wrong place yeah. at the wrong time. They didn't seem to suffer yeah. the hammer in the head. Uh, that was that was for the chaps who came after the, the daughter. Yeah. So the discovery is so shocking, so horrible, that the locals go wild with anger. Where are the benders? There is no trace of them. They begin to ransack the home. They are so desperate for answers. The mob found a man named Brockman who was said to be a friend of the benders. They seize him and drag him into the bender's house and they hang him from a beam inside the inn Ooh. they don't kill him though it's a, it's a friendly hanging. it's a friendly hanging they interrogate him they let him down he says he doesn't know where they are hangs him again put him back up again yeah hang him again put him back up again. this happens about three times and then they nice. let him go and he staggers away not in the best of shape <laughs> about six inches taller <laughs> <laughs> indeed interesting postscript on this brockman allegedly was later arrested for the rape and murder of his own daughter. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Should have hung him. Yeah. <laughs> but they were just there to try and find out about what happened to the benders. The cabin, once purged of evidence, became a hotspot for tourists as the story of the bloody benders began to spread. People <laughs> descended on the cabin and destroyed it by taking souvenirs. I suppose there's not much of the cabin left. No, no, completely. They've, they've stripped it out. It's no... Yeah. It was nothing was left. They took the beams. bit of the wall. I've got the wall. <laughs> Literally the bricks and the stone from the cellar. Everyone was taking bits and pieces. Any of the possessions they kept, they would later sell and use them as memorabilia. Yeah. But what of the benders? Mm, wall indeed. A $1,000 reward was offered for their capture, later increased to 3000 The authorities did manage to track their wagon, and they found it abandoned about 12 miles away outside the city of Thayer. They found that the family had brought train tickets, and they were able to trace that the family had split up at one point. Mm. It seemed that John Sr. and John Jr. had gone one direction, the ladies had gone another, but they were able to trace some of their stops, and after that, it becomes a mess of folklore. Yes. Some say they had fled. Two of them had fled to an outlaw colony in New Mexico where the authorities could not possibly go. Others said they were hiding out in St. Louis. <laughs> Running marathons. Running marathons. Others say they committed suicide. Others kept claiming that they had seen them. They had seen them walking around, that they could identify them. All of these came to nothing. There were suspects over the years. A man named John Flickinger was arrested for killing a man with a hammer blow to the head. He was thought to be the same sort of age as John Bender Sr. They were bringing in people, again, it takes a fair few days to identify mm. him. The man, before he could be identified, cut off his own leg to escape his leg irons. Don't know how he thought he was going to do that. <laughs> and bled to death. This is not a clever man, I think. Indeed, and his ID was never confirmed. This may be one of those cases where afterwards everyone said oh we thought he was him there was a famous case as well of a, a pair of women in michigan who went through a very lengthy trial they were crooks themselves but they were also accused of being mar bender and kate bender they would accuse each other of being one or other of the murderers <laughs> because it became clear that the authorities were trying to pin a lot of crimes on them and they obviously thought that this would work out it's a very detailed case but it came to nothing essentially the biggest legends were that members of the vigilante groups that had formed had found the family and brought mm. them to justice. And these are the stories that passed into legend, that one group had found the benders, that they had killed all of them, that Kate had been burned alive Ooh. as penance. It was in her witchy ways. In her witchy ways, they thought she was a witch. Others said that they drowned them in the river. Others said that they disposed of their bodies. Everyone claimed that they were responsible for the benders' death. There was one story about a member of the Ingalls family from Little House on the Prairie. Oh, right. So Little House on the Prairie is based on the Ingalls family, a real family. And it was alleged that the father had been part of a village and anti group that had done away with the Benders. Ooh. But no one ever claimed the reward. Mm. And the Benders, who were implicated in at least 20 murders, were never officially found. <laughs> officially found. Officially found. Unofficially, they are hacked to many pieces. <laughs> many pieces. <laughs> Luckily, a lot of their local legend and artefacts lived on in what I think is fantastic, the Cherry Vale Bender Museum. Nice. Nice. I'll enjoy a Bender Museum. A very parochial museum opened in 1961, an authentic reconstruction of the cabin, complete with dummies of the Bender family. I was going to say, it's going to it's gonna have some excellent waxworks going on, I feel. Excellent waxworks. Not the most sophisticated <laughs> of them. You can see pictures of this online and it is 
brilliant. Oh, I'm sure it's a treat. It's a it's a very crude dummies and the curtain and Pa Bender standing there with a hammer. <laughs> well, I think it may we may have to add it to our Poisonous Cabinet World Tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, we would love to, but it closed in 1978. Ah, oh, boo! It was fresh construction for a fire station, which they badly needed. Um, yeah. Locals voted not to put this Soul Museum back because it was giving the town a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a Cherry Vale Museum and some of the artefacts are still on display there, including some of the hammers and a knife, a oh, bloodied God. knife that was found there. I'm just going to finish this by reading um, a quick quote from the Legends of America website, which is a really good website for this. For all the deaths, the Benders gained only $4,600, two teams of horses, a wagon, a pony and a saddle. Because some of the travellers were carrying nothing of value, it was widely speculated that the benders killed simply for the bloody thrill of it. No. It goes on to say, rumour is that the old bender property was haunted. A decade after the gruesome killings, nothing was left of the cabin and outbuildings of the property. The only thing remaining, an empty hole where had once been the cellar. And from these depths allegedly came the souls of those murdered on sight, wandering about the property and making moaning sounds that could be heard by passers-by. Of those most often reported seeing glowing apparitions on the property were those who came to the site in search of some long-lost souvenir of the grisly murders. <laughs> and possibly one of my favourite, one of the favourite artefacts from this story was a prayer book that was allegedly found in the house just after the killings. Mm -hmm. And this prayer book had notes written in amongst the pages, apparently by the son, John Jr. And one of the notes included the words, Big Slaughter Day, January 8th. Ooh, that's, that's, a, that's a brave thing to be writing down. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the story of the Bloody Benders. That's a good story. Yeah. That's a good, good story. I like the idea of ghosts in a hole. <laughs> Yeah, then point and go, ha, ah, you're in a hole. I think the point is that they <laughs> climb out and then just like haunt people. Oh, yes. well, that's less fun. If they're in a hole, it's no problem. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were just like trapped in a hole and it's like <laughs> stupid ghosts. Ah, good story. like that. A lot of it has passed into folklore. Yes. Mm. There is the question of how much of that is actually... Well, I'm sure probably much of it is true. A lot of people died. A lot of people died. It was one of those where they attributed every murder that happened in the vague vicinity or any Absolutely. death to the bloody benders. It's a very good get out of jail free card for I can't figure this one out. Oh, it was them. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems to be the case with a lot of the sightings of them later on. There's mm. there's a lot of detail on the sightings to the point where I kind of went, you know what? This is a little bit tenuous. You, you can surmise it as someone was seen. They thought it was them. They weren't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a German person. It must have been them. <laughs> <laughs> a man carrying a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of rumours later on about who they were. Biggest rumours were around Ma Bender saying that she had had two husbands before and she'd murdered both of them. She'd had 12 children. She'd murdered all of them as well, but decided to stop murdering at the two kids. She Absolutely. But these two, no, we're not going to do any more murdering this time. We're going to murder other people. She moved on. She grew as a person. <laughs> <laughs> And, it, and there's nothing quite like opening an inn and a general store and killing all of your customers. Well, absolutely. You're, you're on a public trail, then, you know, business is transient at best. Absolutely. I mean, make the best of what you can do. <laughs> what do you think about the spiritualism of the of the family? Because you see, I think, I've, I feel like you knew that bit about the, the daughter. I, I did know that. But I, yeah, I knew, I knew much of the story um, through my own Googlings and things for future episodes. The spiritualism bit, I mean, I've... <laughs> I mean, yes, absolutely. It was very much of the time. Spiritualism was a huge thing, not only in the States, but also in the UK as well. People were a lot more gullible, perhaps, than they than they are mm. now, so would more readily accept such tales of, yes, I can talk to your dead wife. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> they say that the five families who settled in that area, who did a sort of a collective land claim, but they're often referred to as five spiritualist families. I mean, I don't think it really matters. If if a buxom lady is going to turn up and say, I can see the dead and everyone have sex with each other. I, th I think that is probably more the point, really, isn't it? So, and considering all the, all the victims are men. Yes. Made the trek to this out of the way rest stop. Most likely after hearing about her or seeing her talk or something like that. Mm. And if she's on stage or giving a talk about everyone should drag everyone here are my breasts. 
So, <laughs> I, th- I think that was the name of her lecture tour. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Have sex with everyone. Here are my breasts. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure there was a queue outside her door for her spiritual advice, and no one came out, and no one took the hint. <laughs> so yeah, they did say that people came in, and she was doing the seance. Well, the dad was behind with the hammer, so she must have just been going, ooh, look into my eyes, look into my eyes, look into my eyes, ooh. And then whack on the head. Yeah, oh, it's a ghost, oh, it's a ghost. You're dead, you're with them now, you wanted to talk to them. (laughs) Yes, so a truly chilling, gruesome family from the Plains of America, your favourite place. I love love the Plains of America. Indeed. What do you think, people? Do you know the story? It's a very famous story. It's a great folklore story. There are so many um, stories associated with this tale lots of folklore there was a whole other story about William York's brother being at the inn Mm. and seeing some evidence brains on the wall (laughs) pretty much but there was a whole bit about Colonel York finding a locket from his brother on the premises and he went outside and in the dead of night and could see the family with torchlight digging a grave with a body and it was just I could have included that but that seems very convenient yes clearly bollocks so all sorts of great great stories associated with it loads of adaptations and loads of use of this in has 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 it ever been a film or anything like that well, I don't think it's been a proper film. It's never been just about the Benders. They have been the inspiration for a lot of things. A lot of popular TV series, unless I'm wrong, but do chime in if you know one. But a few TV series have covered them as a as inspiration. They're referenced in American Gods by oh, okay. Neil Gaiman in the book, not the series. Yeah, yeah. But yes, tell us what you think of this story. If you know it, if you know more folklore, if you know more wild and creepy tales, whether they're true or not, just send them through to us. Just have a go on social media this weekend with a couple of cocktails in hand. Tell us your spooky, spooky stories about the bloody benders. And yes, two cocktails for this Friday. I shall be putting the recipe for both up. Both of them. Give them a go. They're damn good. This was a good day. This was a good day. I'm very <laughs> happy. So yeah, the, the velvet hammer and then the nine pound hammer. Very, very different cocktails, but equally delicious in their own ways. So do let us know what you think. They, they are damn good cocktails. <laughs> I mean, it's not just that they're drinkable. I'm just, I'm, I, I really like them. I know it's really nice. It made me very happy. I know, you should, probably shouldn't have them together. I'm going to regret mixing yes, the citrus yes, and, there, there and, the, and the creaminess. Probably don't do that. I'm not a fan of the creamy cocktails normally, but God damn it, that's tasty. That will be made again, I have to say. I know so many of you send listener suggestions for the cocktails every single time we boast the secret ingredient. Sometimes we can't make them because we just simply don't have the stuff in stock. But if we do, we'll give it a we'll go. give it a go, absolutely. Maybe we'll just make seven cocktails every week. It'll be a good day. It'll be a good day. Thanks so much to Andrew who's um, submitted that. And thank you to everyone who also left other suggestions on the post this There were week. many, yeah. Yes, there were some brilliant ones and we are going to make them all weekend. <laughs> and we encourage you, dear listeners, to look at the recipes. If you see something that one of your other fellow followers has posted, make it go for it and tag us in your cocktail pictures whatever they are tag the poisonous cabinet let other people know about the wonder that is us and if you do like it then of course check out things on patreon so we have a delightful many exciting stories for you there but for a few pounds a month it's a bargainous thing to have lots of lovely extra tales more of us what more could you want quite Thanks for listening, guys. We have been the people inside the Poisoner's Cabinet. We will see you next week. And remember, your loved ones are trying to kill you. Bye.